Welcome to Herman Legend in Park with your hosts, Mark Wall, Neil and Chris, and Mark. Hello and welcome to Urban Legends New Year Special. Uh, it's a podcast about urban legends and all kinds of stuff surrounding it, uh, even if it's via very thin fabric. Um, we got a double episode today because um, it's a New Year Special. Uh, so the thing is that a lot of the New Year's legends are pretty, pretty thin gruel. So uh, I'm going to do two from, uh, one from Spain and one from Japan, so opposite sides of the world. Uh, I should introduce myself. I'm 1800s rent collector, Chris Flynn. And with me, as always, is a man with some very interesting theories on pyramids. It's Mr. Neil Herbert. Hi, Neil. How are you doing? How's, uh, how's your 2022 been? Less said about that, the better. Oh, okay. Um, Not a yeah. good one. Well, you know, probably the same as everyone else, to be honest with you. So let's yeah, hope, let's hope 23 years, um, works out a bit better. I'm not sure. I think we're going to cling on for another couple of years before it gets better, to be honest with you. Yeah, I think I think 24 earliest, really, probably. Yeah. So, Neil, uh, you're you're quite into your pyramids. Is that just is that just the Egyptian, or are you into pyramids of all of all uh, cultures? Oh, just absolutely. I mean, they're they're obviously, uh, you know, it, it's not just a uh, spiritual sort of Egyptian stuff, Chris. You know, there's hard science behind this. Oh, good, yeah. good. Man. If you if you've read my manifesto and my blog, then yes. uh, you know you what you know. sent to the FBI. Yes, <laughs> shamefully ignored it, and yet another you know um, example of the corrupt state. Yeah, but you know what? What can't pyramids do? You control minds, sharpen razors. Sharpen razors, can they? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah you. You put I, a. You put I would a, suggest not Occam's. <laughs> why do you think Gillette make all of their raises in the middle of the Giza pyramid? Oh, do they? Is that what? Yeah. It's, it's, it's a fact. In a, a chamber underneath that. the That's Sphinx. a fact. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. Is it a hushed up fact? Because I've not heard it. It's, facts don't care about your knowledge of them. Oh, okay. And so, what, what do you think about kind of like Mesoamerican uh, pyramids? Not as keen because you know they they don't like not got the, yeah ge- not not as good. So you only it's, like they're, they're stepped pyramids. I like yeah. a geometrically yeah. perfect pyramid. Oh, so don't get me wrong, they're, just... they, they're good. Yeah. They're good, but you know not you're, not your con- time. you're not concentrating the powers as much as you could be. Oh, okay. You know, I mean, so, hey, you know, for modern society, it's you know a lot of people good. It's good enough, isn't it? What's good enough? Yeah. Do you know what's good enough for me, Chris? Perfection. Perfection. Exactly. Lovely. What do you not, think? Not of... Enough of that thinking. It's just me and Elon Musk these days. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about the pyramid on top of Canada One Square in the Canary Wharf in London, Stocklands? The glass pyramid well, on top of what used to be London's tallest building. That's why they're kings of all the finance, aren't they? Because they've tapped that power. Is that what yeah. it is? Yeah. No. Oh, so, oh, so the, you know, the Louvre. Why is why has that got the best collection of arts in all the world? Not because they stole it from a load of people with a colonial lizard. Under, under <laughs> Napoleon. <laughs> it's it's because they built a pyramid. Glass pyramid outside. Yeah, outside, concentrated all of the cultural resources of the world into one of the greatest displays of art that we've ever seen. I mean, really? that was done quite a bit later after all of these things were collected. But uh, Yeah, but time's, time's not linear. No, exactly. We're when it comes to pyramids. To flat circle, as we know. Yeah, well, this is another thing that, you, you know, it messes with the chronology of time and... Um, Okay. So, yeah. uh, so are the Giza pyramids That's built now saying. or in the future, or are well, they currently being built, or are they always being built? They, uh, have they always been there, and will they always be there? That's the question. Mm-hmm. Uh, What's the answer? There isn't one. Right. Okay. Um, so that's a fact. That is a fact. So, 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 where do they get their power from? Is it from starlight or uh, ley lines or vortexes? It's a combination of all of those and many, really? many, many. It, basically, you're taking all kinds of energy. I mean, things people talk about ley lines and all things like this esoteric kind of like occult things. Well, no, they're just sources of energy, yeah? Mm. You know, because would people have known about geothermal energy 300 years ago, Chris? No, digging into the ground to get heat, you would have been considered a madman, wouldn't you? I all think... We're tapping into sources of energy. I mean, I, I think people still knew the volcanoes were hot. Don't dispute facts, Chris. You look like an idiot. Right, sorry. Yeah. And you look like a terrified caveman screaming at fire. 
Well, I mean, so you're making your me feel like that's what make I am. You warm. Yeah, well. Maybe that's it. Maybe, yeah. You know, maybe I'm just sorry. not not. Sorry, as sorry the harsh light of my genius is turning oh, hiding in the shadows that you like to. Oh, it's burn, it burn burns around. the eyes, yeah. and stings the nostrils. That's what truth does. Like sulfur. Clears out all the. Your, your, your sinuses. Yeah. Right, yeah. <laughs> is that your sinuses? Yeah. Also, parents very good, yeah, for, for sinus. Are they? And how, yeah. how does that work? Do you sit on top of it or do you go into some sort of uh, yeah, internal chamber? Really. Yeah, you go, oh, really? Well, just go near per, it. Personally, I'd go into an internal that's chamber. In, that's why no one in Cairo ever gets the colds. Exactly. Yeah. That's fact. Is it fact? Yes. Really? Common colds never reach Cairo. Yeah. And only some of them Stops reach the Mexico City. Yeah, but that's because you know a lot as you've yeah. already L- largely, largely kind of like um, nullified, ameliorated. But uh, yeah, uh, but because of the because I've got step pyramids, then uh, it's yeah. not it's not quite powerful it's enough, not as potent as it could be. Mm. Yeah. Watered down. Yeah. What about kind of um, pyramids in sort of Japan or like earthen pyramids, which you get in China? Which figure them? Not interested. No, I just don't care. Don't care. <laughs> Never heard of them. <laughs> not, my, not my area of pyramid yeah. expertise. If any good, I would have come across them by now, I'm sure. Oh, fair enough then. Yeah. Cool. All right. Well, um, pyramids in India? No. Yeah, no. So it's just Egypt and Mesoamerica, but not really Mesoamerica, just, just Egypt. Just the geometrical shape, really. That's what I'm interested in, you know. But hey, the pyramids of Giza, that's the, uh, you know. So the top, the top demonstration of the how you want to, got to make them big and you've got to make them bold. Yeah. Bold as brass. Yes. <laughs> oh, the brass top cap. Yeah, you can't beat that. Well, it was gold, you know, wasn't I, it, originally? Mm. Oh, no, it's, yeah, because the pyramids were covered in limestone and had a gold top cap originally. To uh, to better source the power down into the uh, Well, the it's very inert, isn't it? Yep. <laughs> so excellent for, as, as you know, conductor. Makes them well. I mean, it's perfect for kind of audio equipment, isn't it? You always want your, your gold tips. Absolutely. Yeah. <clears throat> for like HDMI cables, want a bit of gold plating on them. Yeah. I, you know, if you want to see a movie properly, you should spend at least £200 on a HDMI cable. Fact. <laughs> <laughs> That's what the guy that still told me. And I'm, really? You know, I know facts when I see it. Have you never had this in the thing where someone tries to sell you like an overpriced HDMI cable? No, because I just buy them online so I don't have to deal with salespeople. Yeah, well, that was the, the last time I went into Where'd you go? Rich, was it in Richer Sounds? No, it wasn't Richer Sounds. And to be fair, Richer Sounds are normally or customer service is all right. It's, um, no, I went, I can't remember. I think I, this was years and years ago. I bought my dad like a Blu ray player. Mm. Like it is a little, little thing. Um, and then they tried to upsell me on the HDMI cable. I said, no, I'll take the cheapest one you got. And it's like, oh, no, that's full there. And no, I'll take the it's digital. It's exactly <laughs> the same. Well, well, no, it's not. No, hey, it's just not. let me live my life, man. <laughs> I'll have the cheapest. I'm spending fucking nearly two hundred quid in a Blu-ray player. Give me the cheapest HDMI you got, cheeky fucker. Well, you know, whatever it was, but uh, yeah. I mean, yeah, uh, yeah. I don't. I don't know how the how people get paid in electronic stores. I mean, you might have been on commission and good luck to him, but I just wasn't. Into, yeah, and like I, I say, you know, but if not, it was then just buying a HDMI cable. I don't know. I mean, he might have genuinely believed that it was better. I don't know. Don't don't really care. Yeah, fair enough. So you don't you don't speak anymore? No, we've not guy. spoken since. <laughs> really? Oh. I mean, I'm, not, I'm not sure. We it sounded like a promising friendship. I mean, he was all going all right until then. Yeah, I thought it was. Everything. But he just, he, I don't know. Yeah, so I don't know if he was on commission or just genuinely thought that I was. I'm finding out that someone's anti vax like after you've been chatting with them, getting on really well for like yeah. an hour. Well, oh. You know, it's a toxin, yeah. You know, they put mercury in it to control. Speaking of which, Neil, have you uh, seen these Backed. new? Have you seen these new Trump NFT trading cards? Oh, <laughs> they've been designed in a pyramid. Well, they, they did all sell out in one day, you know, but that doesn't surprise me because a lot of people probably think they're going to make loads of money. Yes, they are <laughs> hilarious. It, it's just like it's, it's written like it's, it's the insane. Clothes, but it's insane. Going, well, yeah, being nude is is the ultimate flex. By the way. Yeah, it's, it's insane, brilliant. like to, like as a superhero and stuff. Oh yeah, it's, you know, it's, you know, watch around with guns as a military thing. I mean, <laughs> I don't know why they didn't just have him as like Conan the Barbarian with just like a massive erection. You know what I mean? Just like a three foot cock. <laughs> yeah, Banging the Statue of Liberty. Exactly. <laughs> you know, take it to its logical conclusion, for fuck's sake. That's incredible. I mean, I it's yeah, sort it's, of beyond parody, isn't it? Well, no, it's 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 several steps beyond parody. 
If you'd sort of, you know, if you'd written that into an episode of the, if you'd done like, done like an American special, the thick of it, do you know what I mean? Like fifteen yeah. years ago and done that, you'd have been like, oh, Amanda and she's losing it a bit. This mm. is this, this is well <laughs> over the top. Do you know what I mean? You just you can't, you you just can't. Yeah, Amanda. Oh. So, the, so the American version of that, which was done by Amanda and she was Veep, Veep for our North North American, American friends. Yeah, I think he's like. Well, if you're a bit of a comedy geek, if we can put it like that, he probably, he's probably known in America. But you know, yeah, he's doing Avenue Five at the moment, isn't he? Yeah, that space thing. No, I've not cool. seen it yet. But so you, you've been uh, shaking down some of those fucking tenants who won't pay their bills, then, Chris? Is, yep, that's I'm right. Sure. Come Christmas time, they tend to be squealing about needing to buy food for Tiny Tim and all that shit, don't yeah, they? Yeah, that matter to me. Sell yeah. your furniture. That's what I, I say. assume they see the back of your hand. <laughs> well, no, they, well, they, they, well, they see the back of um, my foot up their ass as I kick them out on the streets. Nice. Don't pay your rent. Out you go. Simple yeah. as that. You know, I, you know, I don't own the properties. I, um, yeah. I get, I get a percentage of the rent that I'm able to collect. You know, why should my family go hungry? Exactly right. Yeah. Yeah, so they're not going uh, hungry, are they? They're, they're not. No, they're gaunt. No, they're, my yeah. kids are morbidly obese. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so they're a little, little bit too well fed, aren't they? Yeah, little... terrible health conditions, which is why I need the money. <laughs> yeah. Gout, yeah. At, gout at six years old. <laughs> yeah, it's not bad, is it? Yeah. Not bad. That's, yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, one of my kids had to have a leg removed yeah. at three yeah. <laughs> because um, he'd been eating too much um, buttercream. So well, you, you saw him eating a carrot, didn't you? you knocked it out of his hand. Yeah, not, <laughs> not for you. Markets. No, that's what horses eat. Here, have a suet pie. <laughs> yeah, so uh, yeah, the rent collecting going doing all right. There's plenty, you know. There's plenty of. Um, there's always more people need, looking. Need, need someone to live, don't they? Yeah, and if um, you know, if I lose a bit of money on the old GGs, then I just uh, up the rent by twenty five percent. Make it bad. back. Not too bad. They don't like it. There's always someone else. Yeah, fair enough. Go somewhere else then. Yeah, fuck off. Pull you yourself know, up by you your bootstraps. Like, and... You don't like living in lower Manhattan and five points. If you don't, if you don't you like can. extortionate rent, then buy your own house. What do you think of that? You don't live in a city. They should not think these things through, do they? Oh, yeah, you just go and, go and live in the in countryside country. where there yeah, are no jobs. Find, find a cave. Yeah. Find a cave, forage for mushrooms, you know. Don't don't like it. Found your own country. Yeah, exactly. You know, get on, um, do what do what my think it's easy. Did. Get on, Get on your bike. And cycle to another country and find find a job and somewhere to live. Yeah. Found it. Come up with your own source of economics and yeah, find students. your own government. Yeah, kill yeah. the indigenous Create people. your own society. Yeah. <laughs> Steal all the Think land. So come, easy. Up with a, yeah. come up with a come up with a system of land ownership. Claim it for yourself. No problem. No problem at all. That is the problem. They can be bored to get off their asses. Well, they're too busy moaning. They're they're too, too moaning busy. in Irish and they're Italian. Soy lattes they? and. Complaining about how life isn't fair. Yeah, not a lot of them have soy lattes. To be fair, in, um, no, in well. eighteen hundred tenements, which I which I've run. But you know, the thing is, you've got, you've got to remember, Chris. We, we're actually technically from the future, so it's kind of it gets very confusing. Yeah, it's, we pointed it, out that you know time's an illusion in the past. Well, this series is confusing, isn't it? Well, like, well, we I think a couple of future. mischievous little Doctor Manhattans <laughs> struggling to comprehend. <laughs> Look, dancing, how you, how you dancing along the timeline yeah, yeah. Hmm. well it's because we've got all our cyber cyber implants in our brains exactly yeah. yeah way ahead experiencing many many realities at once and do you know what this episode very much we're going to be experiencing two realities at once Ooh-hoo. one from each side different side of the globe uh so from for new years uh in spain we're going to look at hom del nasos Mm. And from Japan, we are going to look at Namahage. And both of them are New Year's traditions, and they couldn't be more different. Oh, good Lord. Mm-hmm, rather. <clears throat> so which one would you Back like to hear it. first, Neil? I'd say let's let's head off to Japan. There's okay. something interesting happening Nippon, there. Nippon, land of the rising <laughs> sun. Yes. So. What does that translate as, Chris, into? What? But for those of us who don't speak Japanese, like me... Oh, you idiots. <laughs> you don't even speak basic Jap- basic conversational Japanese. That's unbelievable. Um, is, um, what what does Namahage? Yeah. Uh, that's just their names. Oh, okay. That's literally... I thought it might translate into, like, you know, nah. men- many-headed fish lady or something. 
No, unfortunately not. Or maybe it does. Let's read on. Let's find out. <laughs> so uh, I'm just reading this from Wikipedia, but I might have a look at some other sources. Um, again, the New Year's one tend to be quite thin on the ground um, as, to, as to what they're about. So, so <clears throat> the Namahage are demon-like beings portrayed by men wearing hefty oni, which is ogre, masks, and traditional straw capes, mino, during a New Year's ritual in local northern Japanese folklore of the Uga Peninsula, uh, area of the Akita Prefecture. Mm. These frightfully dressed men impersonating the Oni demons wearing masks, dressed in long straw coats or mino, locally called Akide or Kende, they are armed with deba knives. <laughs> okay, they're coming tooled up, I like. Coming tooled up, albeit wooden fakes or made of paper mache. So, it's just, just a safe, case, isn't it? Because, you know, someone what, has what, a bit too much sake. <laughs> they go out prowling on New Year's Eve, you guarantee that's a real that's, that's a real tool that we're carrying around with. But, you know, for the demonstration, they're just, uh, you know. Yeah. Bit of paper and, mache. And toting uh, tioke which is a hand pail made of wood, so a bucket, wooden bucket. So a knife and a bucket. Knife and a bucket. All the better to bleed you it's with. good name of a pub, that. Knife and bucket. Yeah. So they march in pairs or in threes, going door to door, making rounds of people's homes, admonishing children who may be guilty of laziness or bad behaviour. <laughs> what is it about this time of year? We just, poor, kids, poor kids, leave them alone. Been admonished enough. Fuck Yelling so. phrases like... Are there any crybabies around? <laughs> you cry, you cry, baby. I think this is stressful. You imagine what I look like. I had to do the civil service exam when I was five, which is Nakuko uh, wa iniga, or are any naughty kids around? Warukiko wa iniga. I think their definition of naughty in ours is going to differ slightly. Yeah, I think so. You didn't you didn't bow properly to your father. Yeah, you didn't bow low enough to show status. Uh, yeah. In the pronunciation, and well, not to disrespect others, uh, you know, of the local dialects. No, it, it's just it's yeah. a different way of doing it's a different things. Way of looking at things. Exactly. I would hate it. Oh no, it wouldn't wouldn't suit me. Yeah. No, I wouldn't even. Bow not saying one way is right or right or wrong, but obviously we I you think know, it's probably brought up differently. Um, traditionally, the Namahage have worn painted wooden masks sometimes made of wood bark and primarily painted red. But in recent years, they have been manufactured using bamboo strainers as frames, cardboard material or flattened metal canisters. Hmm. <laughs> like um, uh, Ned Kelly. <clears throat> oh, yeah, that'd be... Well, that's the thing is, because everyone, everyone associates Ned Kelly with that armour, which is mm. actually his fatal mistake, wasn't it? Because um, he he made like um, a load of like really heavy armor out of a plowshare and then came out to fight um, some British. It was his last stand, but hadn't realised. Mm. I think he didn't have armor for the knees, so they just basically shot out his legs. And he was so <laughs> heavy, he couldn't really yeah. see out of it. Or yeah, because it, it's fascinating. Tale, it's, actually, Ned Kelly he was, he was an interesting lad. It's a striking sort of uh, image, isn't it, of him coming yes. out with a no, suit of armor made of cast. Yeah, it, I mean, it looks really cool, but as with a lot of these things, it's just, it just turns out impractical. completely impractical. Um, just, yeah, but he was very much sort of uh, an eloquent gentleman who was quite harassed by uh, by the authorities. Anyway, that's for another. Yeah, that's for maybe, another maybe we can do a we could do a true crime podcast one of these days. Oh yeah, um, what was it? What was it called? Urban Legends Nights. No, I can't remember because <laughs> <No. laughs> we were talking about it when we looked at the the witch ghost. Yeah. Um, so, and the uh, Namahage may travel in pairs, one red face and the other blue, in the hamlet of Yumoto. So one's red face, one's blue, they're three? Yeah. Well, pair, they, it, it, it depends. They could red, pairs or, or, so red or blue face also, yeah, okay. Yeah, and they pairs or threes. Yeah. In the hamlet of Yumoto, which is incorporated into the city of Uga. The straw retire are often described as mino, which is sound Japanese, but these are considered particular writings of clothing known to the locals as kide. 
So the Namahage's purpose was to admonish laggards. <laughs> Is this all laggards or just sort of kids again? Who sit around the fire idly doing nothing useful. So this is the etymology bit. Hiya. Hiya. <laughs> what are you doing? Oh, nothing useful. Just, just enjoy the fire. Just just, just just warming my feet up. Yeah. Why not? I don't want to work for the day. Why has it all got to be? Well, it sounds like they're not doing their work for the day. Oh, okay, yeah. Sitting around a fire. Dragging, dragging village productivity down. Oh, nightmare. Our prefecture is behind. One of the refrains used by the Namahag Namahage is the olden in the olden days was blisters peeled yet. <laughs> oh, catty! Oh, <laughs> oh, I haven't got any blisters exactly. Uh, Namomi ko hagatakayo. That's what it means. That's in my perfect Japanese dialect. Yeah, absolutely, I should be pronouncing all these. Basically, uh, Namomi signifies heat blisters. Oh, okay, yeah. Good or more precisely, that. Hidako, which in Japanese is Dariesi uh, Kyo, Hihan. But Hidako is a glossed over uh, in... I can't, just, just, talking about sure. blis- just, just talking about blisters. Yeah, I don't, I don't know, know where this is going. It's kind of gone off on a bit of a tangent. <laughs> it's just a lot of random Japanese words and talking about blisters. Anyway. Okay. Uh, uh, so, thus, blah, 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 thus. blah, thus, fire rash peeling is generally believed to be the derivation of the name Namahage. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. Perfect. No, no notes. Follow, but, follow yeah. that through like an Adam Curtis documentary. <laughs> I could not even be bothered to pass that. So, although the name, so tradition Although the Namahage are nowadays conceived of as a type of oni or ogre, it was originally a custom where youngsters impersonated the kami who made visitations during the New Year season. Thus, it's a kind of toshigami. And a toshigami is... uh, is uh, the son of a Shinto deity who comes around New Year. Okay. Okay. This is, this is a very confusingly written article. Yes. The practice has shifted over the years. According to the 20th century descriptions, Namahagi would typically receive rice cakes from households they visited, but newlywed couples were supposed to play host to them in full formal attire and offer them sake and food. Well, if, if the ogres come calling. I, mean, I suppose this is some kind of like... I don't know, Shinto kind of like nature. Well, not I don't know nature things, but are ogres are nature spirits. I don't really know. Um, that's interesting, isn't it? Well, it's, it's, it's an interesting one, though, isn't it? Because it feels like you know, if you had you know goblins around and you had to sort of like you know, part yeah. of a three course dinner for them. Yeah, give them some booze. I quite like that because you've got married. I think they'd be terrible house guests as well. Yeah, considering they're just pissed up blokes in masks. Yeah. So, um, still, you know, the Namahage still receive hospitality in likewise manner during New Year's, but in a reversal of roles, the uh, Namahage distribute rice cakes to visitors and tourists during the Namahage Sido Matsuri, which is a Ooh, festival. It's a bit give and take, though. Mm. So, it's a New Year's ritual. And the Namahage visits now visits nowadays take place on New Year's Eve using the Western calendar. Yeah. But it you used know, I've never thought of this before because the Chinese New Year obviously it's February, isn't it? It's, it's lunar or whatever. But um the Japanese use a Gorian character calendar. They do use Gregorian, do they? Yeah, because yeah. I was um I might this New Year. So there's a they do a thing, they have like a New Year's noodles, like and it, and then you have long noodles. It's okay, like, a, yeah. like a thing on New Year's Eve to kind of be long life in the new year. And, they, and yeah, there's yeah. a there's a place down in Port Slade, actually, which yeah. Japanese place, which does it. So I might go down to this Very nice. New Year's Eve. Um, yeah, that's the only time they're opening over sort of the Christmas period is yeah, for the yeah. New Year's thing. So I thought, oh, I might go down there, seeing as I'm not boosting. Yeah, because they, um, yeah, because they, I can't remember what it's called, but there was like a restaurant, well, there was... A period where they basically looked to learn from the West, didn't they? So I wonder whether they converted to Gregorian calendar at that period. It was like um, early 19th century or, so, or 
mid nineteenth yeah, century. That or when America took it over called. after World War Two. Who knows? Yeah, I don't know. Can't so, remember the uh, the name of that period. Edo, I think it might have been the Edo period, but anyway, whatever. Um, but it used to be practiced on the so-called Little New Year, which is the first full moon night of the year. This is on the 15th day of the first lunar uh, calendrical year, which is not the same thing as January 15th. It usually falls around mid-February, exactly two weeks after the Chinese New Year. Mm-hmm. Before mentioned, Namahage Sedo Festival, or Sedo, uh, which was not established until 1964, is held annually on the second weekend of February, roughly coinciding with the Little New Year at the uh, Shinzan Shrine. So, uh, some of the other, some of the Nagahame's other spoken lines were of knife wedded yet and uh, boiled <laughs> adzuki beans done yet. <laughs> they're really passive aggressive. Yeah, they're not really. Uh... So, the knife apparently signifies the instrument used to peel the blisters. It's very blister heavy <laughs> tradition. I mean, blisters are clearly more of an issue. Um, well, it's because they're sitting by, the, they were they were sitting sitting by, by the fire so much they got blistered up. Yeah. So that's proving they're lazy. So it's like one of these things where they've had to come up with like a thousand different insults for somebody with blisters. But you know, yeah. like, as with all of these things, after the first five, you just kind of run out of. Uh... Yeah, stick to three. Yeah. Uh, so the legend of the Namahegi varies uh, according to an area. In Akita, legend has developed regarding the origins of the Namahagi that Emperor Wu of Han from China came to Japan bringing five demonic oni to the Uga area, and the oni established quarters in the two local high peaks, Honzan and Shinzan. These oni stole crops and young women from Oga's villages. The citizens of Oga uh, wagered the demons that if they could build a flight of stone steps, 1,000 steps in all, from the village to the five shrine halls, uh, all in one night, then the villagers will supply them with a young woman every year. But if they failed the tasks, they would have to leave. Just as the ogres were about to complete the work, a villager mimicked the cry of a rooster and the ogres departed, believing they had failed. <laughs> oh, ogres. you got them on technicality there. That's like... Well, they thought it was the morning because yeah, like, someone it? went. Come on. He's, he's played. He's played no, clever. There. No, he's I mean, I mean, it's. I mean, it's still pitch black, but it must be morning. <laughs> well, rooster wouldn't be crying otherwise, would they? Absolutely. Oh, it was, and it was the the Meiji period, by the way. It's not the Edo. It came after the Edo period. Mm. No, for those 1868, apparently, when they started to okay. modernise. Um, sorry, again, only, only I'm interested in that. But, no, uh, I'm interested. But uh, yeah, so okay, so so they so there's, there's a basic like a little tale where they would um, or sort of some folklore where so they... the China because China and Japan hate each other and always have. <laughs> then the Chinese emperor came over with the ogres and they lived on top of the two highest peaks and would come down and nick women, young women, and crops. Uh, and so then they said, right, ogres, if you can build these stairs in one night, yeah, then we'll give you we'll do it we'll just give you the stuff rather than you having to take it otherwise yeah. fuck off and then someone did a rooster thing really... and they went oops oh. but they had to shamefacedly return back then didn't they mm. oh we're two steps away but then two steps I away I sworn we had another couple of hours but <laughs> I mean the know. song's literally just set <laughs> <laughs> well I mean, it took you probably an hour and a half to walk back, and it's only <laughs> like seven now, so <laughs> you don't suppose... No, I wouldn't do that. No, no one could impersonate no. a rooster. So, interpretations. Uh, an obvious purpose of the festival is to encourage young children to obey their parents and behave. A story as old as time. Oh, yes. Parents know who they're... Uh, Namahage actors are each year and might request them to teach specific lessons to their children during a visit. <laughs> oh, you've been a nice boy. <laughs> Largely blister related uh, yeah. lessons, by the sound of it. The Namahage repeat the lessons to the children before leaving the house. Don't steal my chops. Don't steal my chops. Don't steal my chops. 
Some ethnologists and folklorists suggest it relates to a belief in deities or spirits coming from abroad to take away misfortune and bring blessings for the new year, while others believe it to be an agricultural custom where the kami from the sacred mountains visit. Mm-hmm. So there we go, Neil. That's the first of the New Year's that traditions. We're with the new. Okay, so our second one is uh, from Spain. It's another one of uh, the crazy myths of Catalonia. Oh, <laughs> we're at Catalonia the other day. Yeah, we did indeed. Yeah. Uh, right. We're exploring the region of the shitlog. <laughs> okay, so we are uh, in Catalan. Mm-hmm. It's New Year's Day, Neil. Nice. What do you you've think had, of? You've had your you... Christmas. You've had your yeah presents. Yeah. What do you think of when you think of New Year's, Neil? I think of a screaming goat on fire running mm. across the sky. Um, no, I think of, uh, you know, out with the old, in with the new, um, New mm-hmm. Year's resolutions. Do you think of noses? Uh, I can't say it's occurred to me before, but hey, I'm willing to open my mind to a new perspective. Brilliant, because... Uh, Just as well. So, we are looking at... Uh, Hom Dinassos, which Let me is... Guess, this is the, the, the triple-nosed man who punishes children for being naughty at New Year's. No, do you know what? This guy's all right. It's, a bit, it's, it's a bit of fun. Because he sounds like fun. he could be doing quite a lot of gack, because uh, you know, he could turn very naughty. But <laughs> I don't think that's he's, why. He's chosen, he's chosen a, a life of a righteousness. You don't know that. He could, he, he could play... He might not. He, he could play he a could. symphony of nose flutes. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So... This is from uh, BarcelonaLowdown.com. A man with as many noses as there are days left in the year. (laughs) Okay, that's a lot of noses. So, Lihom del Nassos, the man of the noses, is a mythical figure from Catalan folklore with as many noses as there are days left in the year. How does he smell? Very well. He's got lots of noses. Perfectly. (laughs) January the 1st, he has 365 noses, which he then loses one per day as the year of I mean, you'd want to, wouldn't you? I don't think, I don't think, I think one nose is enough for me. <laughs> really weird. Shedding noses. I mean, like, what's the, he must have a terrible night on, like, New Year's Eve when the noses <laughs> grows back. <laughs> Not all this again. It's like um, fucking body horror stuff from the 80s. It's, it's like a, yeah, it's, it's like, like a real thing. Cronenberg horror, yeah. It's, <laughs> don't need any of this. So, during most of the year, the nose man hides away and only comes out on the 31st of December, which is actually when he's only got one nose. <laughs> yeah. Finally, on, my one night, I can go out and party. So, on the morning of New Year's Eve, parents tell their children to be the lookout, uh, to be on the lookout for a man with as many noses that there are days left in the year. So the idea being that the excited youngsters will expect to see a man with hundreds of noses. But it turns out, this just sounds like one of these technicality things that just trick the kids, yeah. Yeah. Um, The game is a play on words based on the fact that on the 31st of December, there's only one day left in the year and any passerby could potentially be La Homme del Nassas. So this was just sort of coined by some right little pedant who was really pleased with himself that he could trick a five-year-old. I don't know. It's a bit bit of fun, isn't it? Bit of fun, I suppose, yeah. Fair enough. So, the man of many noses, affliction, is the the symbolic of the passage of time and starting afresh on New Year's Day. I mean, I've I've often said that the passage of time, sort of trudging towards... Much like many, many noses. Trudging towards an inevitable death is very much like losing a nose a day, isn't it? Uh, What we all say. it's It's a common thing that we say, you know. Yeah, I thought it was just—I thought it was just local to Sussex where we live. But yeah, no. Clearly turns out it's fans uh, of the old factory system as the the rest yeah, of us. The tradition probably evolved from the Roman pagan god Janus, the god of transitions, uh, beginnings and endings, gates and doors. The only, the only actual, the only sort of unique Roman god, I believe, was Janus. Well, there might have been a couple of them, but uh, yeah, most of them were just lifted from, just Greek lifted gods, from the Greeks. They? Um, and translate, but he only had two noses because he was two faced, Janus. So it's the, the god of like doorways or, um, yeah, yeah. Also, gave the name, gave the name the Janus effect. You know, when you walk into a room and you forget what you came in for. All right, 
apparently this is a psychological condition. Your brain kind of resets when you go into a new room because it's thinking about the contexts. Was he also the patron of theatres because of the happy and sad face mask thing? No, that's that's that was like from the ancient Greeks. That was the tragedy of com- they, comedy and tragedy. Comedy and tragedy. It might might have come from the the Italian ones later on, but I think it was okay. originally they used to wear them in Greek. If it was a comedy, they would wear like a, a smiley face or a tragedy. Well, it says here to, to, to back you up, Neil, for people who think you talk rubbish. Janice is normally portrayed with two faces, one reflecting on the past and the other looking forward to the year ahead. Yep. So just, I mostly babble rubbish, but sometimes... It's- so they do... Um, so in Barcelona, they do the Nose Man Parade in the Gothic Quarter. Mm. And he's... Uh, <laughs> so it's got like a, <laughs> like an oversized sort of... I imagine paper mache or plastic head. And he looks kind of like... A bit like... He's, what, he's got a sailor's cap on for some reason. <laughs> so this is yet another reason to spend Christmas in Barcelona. Yeah. Hundred percent. I want to. I want to have presents from the. He's got big white, and... big, so he's got a sailor's hat on, big white hair and mutton chops down the side, nice. and a big white, bushy kind of curling up moustache. And oh, he looks like an absolute psychopath. He's got really big staring eyes and an open mouth. Beautiful. Probably so people can see out. Yes. He sounds like a <laughs> and there's a kid standing next to him with loads of noses um, elasticated on his face. <laughs> It sounds like a laugh. So, I mean, because uh, that's the thing is, you've got 365 noses as well. It's like some of those are going places you don't want noses. Yeah, unless they're tiny. We don't know. Yeah, that's true. We don't know. As as of yet, we haven't managed to yeah. get him to... Um, some, some between your Botox. That wouldn't necessarily be <laughs> desirable. We haven't yet got him to agree to a thorough examination. Well, it might lead to very high standards of uh, hygiene. So, you know, swings and roundabouts. So, Lejon del Nasos in Barcelona. The tradition of the man of the nose is celebrated in towns and cities throughout Catalonia, Navarra, Lirioca, Aragon and Mallorca. In Barcelona on December the 31st, a cap gross with a large nose makes an appearance in several locations throughout the city. The exact route varies each year, but normally starts at the Casa del Entre Mesos at 10 a.m. and finishes at the Placa de Sant uh, Duam around 1.30. This year's itinerary will be published on the Barcelona City Council website a few days beforehand. And I believe he unlocks the town hall for the start of the new year as well. <laughs> oh, okay. So yeah, it's so a, it's a, yeah, so a it's version a, of Black Rod then yeah, in it's the a, Parliament. An official, it's a very official position. Well, he's our version of this, yeah. Um, well, why not? It'd be, you know, it's no less absurd than Black Rod, to be fair. So, um, we all like a bit of theatre in these things. So, he looks different depending on the different towns. Uh, mm. So, in Tarragona or Tarragona, he's got a big red hat and he's blonde. Uh, and he's got a goatee, but not the nice. moustache. They've all got big noses, though. Yeah, you want that, don't you? Yeah. So, um, so uh, in uh, in Tarragona, the head was created in 1968 thanks to the impulse impulse of uh, Juan uh, Vigili Basora and became the first of its kind to adopt the morphology of a tadpole. What? Which I think that might be the nose. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Uh, blah 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 blah. So he walked. So basically, kind of all around Catalonia and that kind of area, they've all got. So Tarragona was the Their first one to do the big yeah. paper mache heads, but it's become quite a big thing. Um. So we've got a song here, which is sung in Tarragona, and that and that's what I'll end this this bit on. Nice. So, on the last day of this year, I look through the keyhole and I see an old man with a nose like a basket. He greets everyone and candy seems to give in. The man of noses, the man of noses, he walks around Tarragona. The man of noses, the man of noses, he says the year is ending. A very big hat on, he seems to be very changed. 
and how his yellow hair is, and to see his red nose. <laughs> it's a very stretched nose. He seems to have a cold. The man of the nose. Pay attention and you will soon know how many days will be left up till the end of year. <laughs> I mean, don't... don't fall into oh. the trap. You will only no, have good. to count. And you can guess it, the man with the nose is. We done there? Yes, yes, that's it. I mean, they don't tend to put in a strong showing at the Eurovision contest, Spain, do they? To be fair, again, it's one of those that it might work in Spanish. And also, if, yeah. you, knew, if you knew the tune and you weren't making it up on the fly. Yeah, no, that's, that's, that's also true. Yeah. I mean, yeah. So there you go, Neil. There's another one. Well, it's a nice little song with it, so that's that's all good. Um, yeah, that's another... Well, a man with many noses, that's... Um, yeah, it's, a, it's a, an arresting image. I might be more tempted to go to the one in Tarragona because I imagine the Bas- well, Barcelona is very expensive and um, maybe it'd be a bit more intimate yeah. in Tarragona. So, Neil, there's two New Year's myths and legends for you. There's some interesting bits of fun. Yeah, well, you know. What do you reckon? As we said before... I don't know. It was um, it wasn't a lot to them, but they were uh, yeah. It's surprising it was... how little there is based around New Year, really. Like you would yeah. think there'd be more sort of myths and legends, but it doesn't seem to be. It's more stuff like there are little kind of traditions which you do within your house. Like in Denmark, they they break plates, or in like Latin countries, they eat a grape for each chime of the clock at twelve, and there's stuff like that. But there isn't many kind of creatures. No, there's some like. There's some scary pasta or whatever they call it on like Reddit. We might have to delve into the realms of Reddit, even though we've resisted well, it next year, but we'll see. We'll worry about we'll worry about that. Let's worry. Months. We've got a whole year to worry about that. You know what I mean? Um, so no, I think well, do you know what? Hey. Even if it's just a little a little dive into some other cultures, it's hey, quite interesting. And, we, and, and that's something new that we didn't know about before. And isn't exactly. that really what yeah. life's all about? We started the new year with the gift of knowledge and, and mm. different perspectives. Mm? <sighs> isn't it? Mm? Mm. Wonderful. And I'll be honest with you, I'm quite glad that we're, we're done now. We can go back to talking about lizards or pigmen. Yeah, I want to uh, find another pigman type creature. Yeah, I've got... Uh, <laughs> I've got... Um, half man, half whatever animal. Yeah, I'm quite interested in in a, in a few of the ones which, uh, which got lined up to have a look at, uh, such as... Let me have a little look-see. Uh... Uh, the Groot Slag, looking forward Ooh. to that. Uh, El Calbron, that's good. Uh, the Smile Dog, that's Ooh. Creepypasta. Uh, the Cemetery Mule. <laughs> hey, man. There's plenty there's, out there. There's plenty out there. Uh, where's... Uh, and Well, there's a uh, Fee Kong Koi, who is... A hilarious ghost from Thailand. Oh, so, I'm be looking. So looking keep to your ears involved with that cheeky little fella. Sometimes, so keep your ears going. Oh, <laughs> and and let's not forget the evil enchanted river dolphin, Otto Encantando. Oh, I've always thought those dolphins were up to no good. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's always the thing, isn't it? With the kind of people who go, oh, "I'll be great if we meet aliens and that," because we'll, you know, we'll obviously be able to work out how to communicate with them. It's like we can't even talk to monkeys they'll, and dolphins. They'll, they'll take one look at us and wipe <laughs> us the fuck out, and rightly so. <laughs> and with that, Neil, a very happy start to the new year. So yes, have a great twenty. Well, here's hoping you will have a lovely twenty twenty three. Yeah, we'll get through it together. Yes. One step at a time. Can only, things can only get better. We, as, as Dean been, Ream we, prophesized, we've been saying over, <laughs> we've been saying every year for the last few years. Cool. All right, guys. Um, happy New Year! And um, yeah, we're back normal time Thursday. And uh, the Christmas twelve days is still going on. If if you're bored, that goes yes. on until the fifth. Cool. All right, guys. Uh, see you soon. Take care. Bye bye. Goodbye. USB Wi-Fi Get that good Busy good